NCAA 2K20 on GA Sports is brought to you by Derek's NCAA 2020-2021 rosters. These are the most authentic college basketball rosters ever produced, featuring true-to-life player faces, ratings, and tendencies, as well as fully customized teams, coaches, and lineups. Check out the Patreon featured in the description so you can get the roster when it drops, plus monthly updates. Come be a part of the most ambitious project in sports gaming by clicking the link in the description. Welcome to the NCAA 2K20 Awards Show. We are going to highlight the best coaches, the best players that we've seen in NCAA 2K this season. And obviously, we have absolutely no shortage of people to talk about and achievements to go over. And first, let's start off with the coach of the year in NCAA 2K20. Is this any surprise? It's Mike Krzyzewski from Duke, the only coach to lead his team to an undefeated record. I mean, not much more that we can say about that than uh, than that for him. Krzyzewski and Duke, oh gosh, apologies there. Um, uh, they, you know, went 17-0, and number one seed, and um, they're presumably number one seed here. And, you know, there's not much more you can say about that with dominating wins over basically every team that they played. Yep, you're absolutely right. And in a difficult ACC conference, Duke made it look real easy no matter who they were playing. So you got to respect him for that. Congratulations to Coach K. Let's move on to our Defensive Player of the Year. And this is one that we've talked about all year. And it should be no surprise that EJ Montgomery is going to take home at the Defensive Player of the Year award. But what may be surprising is how close the margin is between Montgomery and Alahan Demir of Minnesota. What, what was what would what ended up being the difference between Montgomery and Demir? Uh, honestly, it just solely came down to some rebound rate here. Um, we had rebound rates of 16.6 for EJ and then 14.5 for Alahan. Um, that's kind of the only stat that really set them apart. As uh, you know, in terms of defensive stats, they were only mere margins away from pretty much everything, and then they reversed each other in terms of like steals like EJ had one steal and Alahan had 0.4 whereas blocks EJ had 1.5 and Alahan had two you know per game so it was just you know slight things like that that you know we looked at and we're like okay one player's better here the other's better here so we needed something to set them off and you know defensively if you're able to get the boards you know you can get the job done for your team yeah absolutely absolutely and that's really like you say what it came down to for us rebounding is such a big part of what makes you a good defensive player on ball. Both of these guys are excellent in the post. Both of these guys are excellent. And really what it came down to was EJ Montgomery is a better rebounder. He was able to uh, set his team up in transition uh, at a better rate with more efficiency than what Demir was doing. So while the margin may be close, EJ Montgomery takes home that award. Let's begin with our positional awards. Let's move to center of the year. This is an absolutely stacked field, and congratulations to Matt Harms of the Purdue Boilermakers, who really came on strong in the conference season to seal this award. Yeah, and you know, no surprise there. Like you said, during the conference season, you know, out of, out of conference is great and all, but you know what, Purdue going 10-0 in conference with Matt Harms, you know, I think he had a 30-30 game in that, and along with he that, did. he right it's just amazing stuff and he was the leader among centers um, in PER efficiency and rebound rates so he uh, usurped I think James Wiseman here that a lot of people saw as a depth dominant center and uh, uh, as a Buki as well you know from KU you know both those guys finishing second and third respectively but yeah Matt Harms phenomenal stuff from him Yep, yep, you're absolutely right. And not only is he the leader among centers in rebounding rate, he is the nation's leader in rebounding rate. And he is also the nation's leader in double-doubles, the nation's leader in rebounds. Everything that you want from a center, Matt Harms brought to the table. And he will certainly factor in when we get to the player of the year discussion. Talking about the player of the year, here is another guy that we knew was going to take home an individual award, EJ Montgomery. Congratulations to him for being named the power forward of the year. What else can you say when you compare him to his contemporaries in that position? It's not even a competition. EJ Montgomery was the best player. <laughs> and, you know, it's no disrespect to Jordan Brown and uh, Demir Cosby Roundtree, you know, who finished second and third respectively <laughs> Definitely. there. But EJ just had a phenomenal year. You know, he putting up, you know, 20 points 
averaging 20 points, and the next closest was Jordan Brown at that 12.7, you know, is phenomenal. So, you know, hats off to EJ, and, you know, we'll see where this helps him land in um, Player of the Year then. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. We've seen now probably two front runners for that Player of the Year award. Moving on, we get to the small forward of the year, and this was a very interesting discussion uh, that our committee had when determining this particular award because the, the wing positions, they have to be so versatile, they have to do so many things. And so it came down to a guy like Preston Achua from Memphis, who is a stat sheet stuffer. But at the end of the day, we had to look at Xavier Sneed from Kansas State. Congratulations to him, averaging 11.5 rebounds, or 11.5 points, I should say, 5 rebounds, adding an assist. This guy may not be putting up the numbers in all the other categories that Achua was, but when it came down to who his team needed the most in big moments, when it came down to scoring, that was what that was where Xavier Sneed really uh, uh, set himself apart. Yeah, absolutely, and you know, shout out to T.J. Holyfield from Texas Tech. Um, I know we've mentioned a few Texas Tech boys in here before. I think T.J. Holyfield was probably the one that was uh, underrepresented the most out of out of the group from there. But um, mm -hmm. you know, when you are when you're averaging 11.2 points, um, you know, a few assists as well as along with some rebounds too. You know, there's not much more you can say about that. Yep, absolutely. And Kansas State, as a team, probably has not gotten the respect from us that they deserve. They'll be looking to prove us wrong in the NCAA tournament. Let's move on to shooting guard of the year. And here is another Texas Tech player that we've talked about all year, Chris Clark. We know how great he's been. But at the end of the season, he just started to peter out a little bit in terms of his production, where Joshua Langford from Michigan State, he had two of the best games that we've seen from an individual when the Spartans took on Michigan. He is a big reason why the Spartans had the turnaround of the century to make the NCAA tournament after starting 0-9, and, and that is why Joshua Langford is the NCAA 2K20 shooting guard of the year. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, big shout out to another favorite of mine, Jared Roden. You know, we talked about him all year. <laughs> As you said, Chris Clark, probably the best shooter um, of the year. He, I think he actually did average the highest points of a shooting guard, of a, of a starting shooting guard. Um, but yeah, Josh Langford, man, just came out of nowhere. Michigan State came out of nowhere. And you know what? He's a huge reason to that. So big moments, big player, Josh Langford. Congrats. Absolutely, absolutely. Led all shooting guards in efficiency as well as estimated wins added, which you can never derive too much from that particular number, but it does show you that Langford was incredibly valuable to his team. Moving on to our final positional award, the point guard of the year. This is another one much like EJ. This one has been locked up for a long time now. Trey Jones from Duke has had one of the best seasons that we've seen, leading the nation in points, 20, averaging 21.4 points a game, as well as 5.2 assists, which is second in the country. Congratulations to Duke's point guard. Shit. Yeah, uh, not much more you can really say about that. I mean, it, it's the same thing as power forward, you know. Xavier Simpson was close. Anthony Cohn was close, Anthony Cohn Jr. was close in, you know, relative terms, but Trey Jones just blew everyone out, and he led every point guard in sabermetric statistics as well, which is just insane for, you know, yeah. his leader at this point, so hats off. Yeah, and when you talk about that, when we mean sabermetric statistics, we mean everyone when it comes to PER, when it comes to efficiency, when it comes to game score, when it comes to estimated wins added, when it comes to assist rate. I mean, this guy had just an unbelievable year, and I mean, I'm sure that you're tired of hearing about Trey Jones at this point because we talk about him all the time, but with good reason, this guy is one of the premier players in the country. Let's move on to the penultimate award. It is, of course, the freshman of the year. And what else can we say? There are three guys on this list that are all very well deserving. But James Weissman, when you look at what he did towards the end of the year with the Memphis Tigers, just edging out Vernon Carey, who himself had a great season with Duke. But man, James Weissman, by the end of the year, looked like one of the most dominant players in the country. Uh, absolutely. And him and it's no surprise to see two Memphis Tigers on there, but him and Precious Achua. You know, both making the list at one and three really goes to show how good this Memphis team really was. You know, no surprise Vernon Carey's on there. He did tail off a little bit towards the end of the season, but I think that's because Trey Jones heated up and, you know, really stole the show for Duke. So, yep, yep. 
I think you're right about that. Congratulations to Mr. Wiseman. And now, the main event, what you've all been waiting for. Let's talk Player of the Year. We'll count down from five. At number five is Yudoka Azubuki from Kansas, one of just two players in the country to be averaging a double-double. Congratulations to him. He's a big reason why the Jayhawks have made the NCAA tournament. Absolutely. And coming in at number four, we have Mr. James Wiseman, who just won freshman of the year. Coming in at number four here, I mean, like you said, just such a huge player down the stretch for his team, all season for his team, consistent. Um, I'm sure he would have liked to finish with a double-double, but finishing with 15.7 points and 8.3 rebounds per game, uh, on average per game, you know, is still outstanding for a freshman player. No doubt, no doubt. Coming in at number three, and now that we've gotten to the top three, uh, I just want to make clear, there is an absolute razor's edge between all three of these guys, and picking one, I'm sure for our committee, was no easy or fun task. At number three is Trey Jones from Duke, and now we talked about so much about how, how he was the favorite for player of the year, and when it came down to it, Jones was putting up absolutely gaudy numbers that we've already talked about, and for him, really, what our committee decided was that when you play on a team like Duke, it's a lot more expected that you will put up the kinds of numbers that Trey Jones did. So the two men in front of him proved that they could perform at that level while playing on, I wouldn't say weaker teams, but teams that aren't the Duke Blue Devils. So congratulations to Trey Jones. He easily could have won this award, uh, and he's had a great season no matter where he finishes in this list. Yeah, absolutely. And number two, it is Griffin's favorite player, I would say. <laughs> but the committee also do love EJ Montgomery. And you know what? He's taken home power forward of the year. He's taken home defensive player of the year. Unfortunately, he won't be taking home player of the year. And that may come as a shock to some of you all. But when you see who wins this award, you will see how razor thin it is here. The EJ man, I mean, not much more we can say that we haven't already touched on. Just an outstanding player. Yep. You know, Kentucky didn't have as grave a season as I feel like they would have liked to, but, you know, still a fantastic team, and I'm sure they'll make a deep run. Yep, you are absolutely right. And what did put EJ ahead of Trey Jones at the end of the day was the defensive numbers. Being a player of the year is all about being balanced, not just going on the offensive end. And like we said, EJ Montgomery is the defensive player of the year, so that's what put him over the edge. And now the winner of the NCAA 2K20 Player of the Year, Matt Harms from Purdue University. Matt Hart, this is not a guy that we had talked about being in this position to win the Player of the Year award, but when you look at what he did, such a big part of being the Player of the Year is also being valuable to your team. And when we looked at Matt Harms' contributions to the Boilermakers versus Montgomery, versus Jones, versus Wiseman, they're all valuable. But without Matt Harms, Purdue would certainly not be in the position to win all 10 of their conference games, may not even be in the position to make the NCAA tournament. Matt Harms averaging 13.8 points, 12 and a half boards, as well as one and a half blocks. Again, he is the country's leader in rebound rate. He is also the country's leader in estimated wins added. This guy proved down the stretch that he is the nation's most valuable and the nation's best player that we've seen in NCAA 2K20. Do you have anything to add about the tremendous year that Matt Harms has had for Purdue? Not much more to say other than I agree with all of that. I don't think Purdue's in the position they're in without him. He's been that good. And I'm excited to see the matchups he's going to have in this tournament here, you know, to show off his further dominance. I think Purdue, him, him and Purdue are a dark horse team for this tournament, so it'll be really exciting to see, you know, him keeping up a double-double and seeing if he will be the leader as well. Yep, yep. I think you're absolutely right, and we can tell you, of course, all five uh, of these players are on teams that have automatically qualified for the NCAA tournament, so their seasons are not yet over, and I'm sure all the individual gold that they've won would pale in comparison to winning that NCAA tournament trophy for any of these guys. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of NCAA 2K20. Up next, we have the final rankings of all 36 teams in our series. You will not want to miss that.